Hi, everybody. This is from section 1.1, basic concepts of arguments, premises, and conclusions. And we are supposed to identify uh, premises and conclusions if they exist. Uh, I think these are all arguments. Let me see. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, this is number two. Since the good is that which furthers a person's real interests, it follows that in any given case, when the good is known, men will seek it. This is from uh, a book. Let's change this here. Humans will seek it. <clears throat> Since the good is that which furthers a person's real interests, it follows that in any given case, when the good is known, humans will seek it. First thing here is, this is one sentence, right? But it's multiple clauses, and so you can actually have a, a complete argument um, with multiple premises and, and a conclusion uh, in just one sentence. So um, here, there's obviously going to be a, a premise, at least one premise and a conclusion contained. And I just want to point out some things. Um, so the word since is... Um, We'll do uh, premises in green. Um, the word since is a premise indicator word. So since this, therefore that. So that's just something you need to memorize. Um, and it follows that, or because of that, let's use blue just in case some people are uh, there's no uh, a light blue um, in case some people are red green colorblind um, since the good is that which furthers a person's real interests it follows that conclusion indicator in any given case when the good is known humans will seek it all right so you don't need the premise indicator the premise is just a complete statement or proposition so this will be premise. We only have one premise here. The good is that which furthers a person's interest. Conclusion, therefore, or it follows that. In any given case when the good is known, humans will seek it. So one premise and a conclusion in uh, number two. Let's continue. This is uh, number five from the ideas of physics. Artists and poets look at the world and seek relationships in order, but they translate their ideas to canvas or to marble or into poetic images. Scientists try to find relationships between different objects and events. To express the order they find, they create hypotheses and theories. Thus, the great scientific theories are easily compared to great art and great literature. So if we look for indicator words, um, we see the word but, which is not necessarily an indicator word, but it's an interesting word. So I'm gonna highlight it. Um, everything else, this is a verb. You know, this, these are subjects. So we don't really see indicators except for this one, thus. So think about it for a second. What do you think thus is in terms of indicator? Is it a premise or conclusion? Correct, it's a conclusion. So let's do blue for the conclusion. So thus is the same as therefore, is the same as in conclusion. So we found, we have found the, um, the conclusion. So our conclusion is the great scientific theories are easily compared to great art and great literature. Now, I haven't looked at all of these yet, but I don't think they've thrown in anything that's unnecessary. So you can see here, now we just need to figure out what the premises are. Um, sometimes in arguments, there'll be unnecessary statements or things that are off topic that don't really relate to the argument. In this case, these all do. So the first sentence, artists and poets look at the world and seek relationships in order. It makes sense that it's a premise. So you could call that premise one.
the word but is interesting. But in logic, logically, but means and. So even though there's a negative connotation to the word but, it usually means and. And if you see but in a sentence, usually it's separating two propositions. So here, even though they say but, technically you could say and they translate ideas to canvas or to marble or into poetic images. That's the artists and poets. Scientists try to do the same thing. They try to find relationships between objects. So that's premise three. And to express the order they find, they create hypotheses and theories. And that's premise four. So there are four premises in this argument and it relates to the conclusion. Now, um, we know that all the premises are necessary because you'll see that the conclusion is that scientific theories are easily compared to great art and great literature. And in the premises themselves, you have an explanation of what artists do and then you have an explanation of what scientists do, and then you have the comparison. And so in order to support your conclusion that they are comparative, you'd want to have uh, premises about both aspects, which you do have here. And so this is a four premise argument that um, has the conclusion that great scientific theories are easily compared to great art and great literature. All right, <clears throat> next uh, problem, problem number eight. The classroom teacher is crucial to the development and academic success of the average student, and administrators are simply ancillary to this effort. For this reason, classroom teachers ought to be paid at least the equivalent of administrators at all levels, including the superintendent. This is from a letter to the editor, and one that you might hear your uh, professors saying, right? <laughs> um, I'm your, uh, your instructor for this course. Uh, I also work as an administrator <laughs> in another life. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of in the middle world here. Um, anyway, I won't draw uh, my own conclusion on this, but let's just examine the argument. Okay, first let's look for uh, keywords. Remember the words and and but are interesting words. They're not uh, premise indicators, <clears throat> but in a certain sense, they might be. Whenever you see and or but, think about that, that uh, word being between two propositions. And we'll see if that's the case here. Uh, we see for this reason. That is actually our uh, conclusion indicator. For this reason, and actually there are two reasons here, um, so, but anyway, we'll get to that in a second. For this reason, classroom teachers ought to be paid at least the equivalent of administrators at all levels, including the superintendent. So that is our conclusion. Now you might be thinking, that this is one premise, but it's not, it's actually two. So whenever you have uh, independent clauses, like things that can stand alone as sentences, like administrators are simply ancillary to this effort, um, and the classroom teacher is crucial to the dot dot dot, dot um, they are separate <clears throat> premises. Now these two actually work together, and we'll be doing argument mapping later on, um, but uh, in argument mapping, you would add a plus between these two because you need them both to support your conclusion. Um, but anyway, the first premise is that classroom teacher is crucial uh, to the development and academic success of the average student. And the second premise is that administrators are simply ancillary to the effort, which is a uh, not, that's actually not a true statement, um, <clears throat> uh, at least not a good administrator. A good administrator would be uh, integral to uh, 
would you know create an environment in which all students can flourish much like uh, Aristotle's ideal leader but anyway um, so there's two premises here and the conclusion is for this reason now you could include if you want to include the uh, the, pre the conclusion indicator you can um, for me I would you know but it doesn't really matter to me but you uh, you know it's a kind of cleaner just to leave it out so that you can see exactly what's being said and you don't get confused. So uh, I hope that you found that helpful with those uh, examples and I will work some more examples from some other areas in another video.